Good morning to you. Dr. Dave back here with you again. I'm going to take you down to Sulphur Springs in Tampa, Florida, the area where I lived went in elementary school. Actually, it's where I was born. Now, everybody knows that the Zodiac Killer did his murders in the area of water. And I've showed you the Sulphur Springs before, but I want to give you a, a little bit better idea of how that whole thing is set up. So let's just get on over there right now while it's early. Here in Sulphur Springs, I'm standing on top of the bridge that goes across the Hillsborough River. I'm going to show you the river in a second, but first I want you to see this, get an idea of this area, because this is a perfect Zodiac Killer area. The spring is over there and a public pool. We'll get a better picture of that later. And right here, is the river. Let's go up there and take a look at it. This is the Hillsborough River. If you follow it down that way, it winds around and it goes to downtown Tampa, which is only about two miles from here if you take the river. But if you drive it, it's several miles. Now this wraps around the area where I live, where the Zodiac Killer was killing people back in the 50s and tried to kill me. Now, if we go right over this way, through these trees, less than a quarter of a mile will be at the elementary school that I lived in where I told you the story about the little boy who got abducted when I was in the second grade and if you go that way a little bit further maybe less than a mile you'll get to the house that I lived in on Minnehaha Street okay so get a picture of this this river wraps around the area where I lived, which was all out in here, and I went to school. And over here is a swimming pool, public swimming pool, and a pond, and a spring where Tampa gets a lot of its water from. Perfect Zodiac Killer territory. It's really beautiful out here. You can see the water falling behind me as it comes out of the spring. So over here is where it runs into the river. We're gonna go down there and get a little closer look. This is the old Sulphur Springs swimming pool. This is where the spring is actually at. It's out there in the center of this pool. It used to be the public swimming pool, but it's become part of the Tampa's water system and it has pumps down in there so they don't allow you people in there anymore. And the public pool is over there. And I don't even know if they use the same water in that as they use in here. I think that's all treated with chemicals and everything, with uh, chlorine and everything for the kids to swim in. And they have a slide there. One of my more favorite parks to be in in Tampa, Florida, Sulphur Springs Park. I wanted to tell you today about a lady in Mexico City who actually knew the Zodiac Killer. And she knew that it was three people and that they had escaped from prison in America. Now this lady was a serial killer. She was known as the Mataviejitas in Mexico, which means killer of elderly ladies. She was a professional wrestler, and many of you may know I was a professional wrestler, and that's where I met her. She, let me just give you a little more history on her. She liked to kill elderly ladies by strangling them, and she would really, really leave them in a mess. She just, it was like she wanted to, you know, cut their heads off with whatever she wrapped around them and tightened it up. They would be all bloody and everything. I saw a few pictures. I don't remember her, her real name, but I'll, I'll put it up here for you. Her wrestling name was La Dama de Silencio, which means the Lady of Silence. Now, in the dressing room one day, before the wrestling matches, she was there and she was wrestling and so was I. She was sitting down on a bench over there and there was another wrestler standing beside of her and I was walking by and the wrestler called me over and said, hey David, I want you to meet my friend here. He said her name and I go, you're a wrestler? And she says, yeah. And he said, she is, her name is the Dama de Silencio. And I said, Dama de Silencio, the Lady of Silence, do you have a secret or something? And she just looked at me like, yeah, she, you know, she didn't talk very much and
she didn't even give out very much body language, but you could read it in her eyes. And he said, yeah, she has a secret, all right. And I go, okay, what is it? And he goes, she, and I looked at her and I go, of course, it's, you're not going to tell it because it's a secret. And he looked at me and goes, it's not that big of a secret. She's a serial killer. And I go, you're a serial killer? And she just looked at me, you know, like she didn't say no, she didn't say yes, but I could tell she was in agreement that, yeah, she was a serial killer. So he said, yeah, she likes to kill old ladies, elderly ladies. He, he just said old ladies at the time. And I said, uh, why? And he goes, she's trying to get back at her mother. And I go, for what? And she go, he says, because she uh, gave her away to a guy who abused her and raped her and beat her and all this other stuff. And I look at her and I go, well, I'm really sorry to hear that. And she looked at me with the most gentle eyes I think that I've ever seen. And I told her, I said, I can't believe that you kill people over that. I mean, you look so gentle. And she just looked at me like, like she was looking at me saying there's two people inside of me same way Frank Morris was and the wrestler said that she had gotten pregnant to this guy who was abusing her so I told her that I knew a guy that you know told me he was a killer but that I really didn't believe him and somehow we got on the conversation about you know who he was and what he was like and I said a few things about what he looked like and everything and I told her that he was there were actually three of them and that they were Americans and she she goes yeah there's a guy there's a a guy here like that and he's got a couple of friends and I go and he really is a killer and she just looked at me she didn't say yes or no and the other wrestler was standing there laughing all the way through this whole thing I told her that they had escaped from a prison in America and she goes yeah yeah that's him and I she said the other wrestler said something about, you know, see, he, he, he's that guy that's after him is, is the same guy that you know. And she goes, well, how do I know that? How, how, how do I, how can you prove that it's the same guy? And I, it just occurred to me uh, to say something to her about the closet. Take a look at my video on the Frank Morris in the closet, the place where he got his demons from. So I just looked at her and I said, now remember, she was sitting down on the bench in front of me and looking up at me, and I said, and I said, you said that you were abused and beaten and everything. Did they put you in that closet? And when I did, she was looking down at her socks. I remember working with something or her boots, and she just looked up at me like that, and just sat there and stared at me. And I go, you have been in there, haven't you? And I, mean, I could see fear in her eyes. And I go, did you meet the demons? And she kind of went like that all the time that other wrestler standing there beside of her laughing I think he said that he, she was his aunt or or something like that he was a nephew and he looked at her and he asked her you know you think it's the same guy and she looked up at him and then she looked at me and she went she pointed at me and she went like that she made an X and then she never said anything else and he started laughing and I go what and she goes and the and he said, and he said, he's going to kill you. And I go, wow, this is all bizarre. You actually know him? And she goes, yeah. It, and I said, and you know that he escaped from prison in America? And she said, yeah. And I go, and you guys sit around and talk about this thing? And she just kind of like, you know, I, I came to the conclusion that in Mexico, serial killers congregate together. You have to keep in mind that Mexico is a, a place where they're not under the same laws as we are. Murder, you know, a conviction, a murder conviction is a 20 year sentence. A lot of people used to uh, escape, escape from prison and, and you know, uh, flee from the law in this country and go to Mexico because of that and the fact that in Mexico City there's 22 million people crammed into a pretty small space. I mean, I hate to say it, but people, they just don't miss anybody that comes up missing, not for very long, because there's just too many people and too many things to do. It's heartless, but that's the kind of thing that serial killers look for. Now, this lady is still alive. She was put in prison in Mexico City back in 2003 or 4 somewhere around there you can look her up she's in wiki uh, under the 
Mataviejitas, I believe, or Mexican ser serial killer serial killers in Mexico, or some other things like that. And if I can ever get a chance to go to Mexico and interview her and get her to to tell us anything about Frank Morris, you'll see that there is another person on this planet that knew him and knew knew me. And all of the wrestlers down there in Mexico knew about about this because they ended up having to escort me out of the wrestling ring with armed wrestlers because when we got outside there Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers were there waiting for us and they had three other guys with them that they had recruited a whole group of serial killers that were planning on taking me out and the next day I went to Frank Morris's house I was angry and I asked him what the hell were you doing and I was ready to fight and he said, I'm telling you, you don't understand it. I've been telling you for years, I'm not your friend. And I go, what? And he goes, I am not your friend. And I go, what do you mean? And he said, I'm a killer. And I go, oh, here you go with that killer thing again. I don't know why I didn't want to believe him. And he goes, I'm the Zodiac. And he said, now that's not me, okay? That's Frank saying that. And he says, and he said, <laughs> And he said, somehow he got around to saying that he was going to kill me. And, and I told him that, uh, I don't remember how he said it, but, and I told him, yeah, you've been telling me that for years and you've been trying to catch me and you haven't caught me yet. So, and he goes, yeah, but we came pretty close last night. And I go, so? And he goes, well, your luck's going to run out soon. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, well, let me just put it this way. When it happens, you're not going to know about it. Well, I had already made plans to leave Mexico. The wrestling office wanted me to go to Japan with Mil Mascaras and Kanek. And that's what I should have done, but instead I, I took off with my girlfriend and we came up back to America and got married and came back here to Tampa. I never saw Frank again after that. That was in 1986. But he was down there killing people up till about 1994, and I'm still searching for an answer to what happened to him after that. And I'm gonna—I've told you before, but I'm gonna tell you again. I think that they came back to America. They went to up to Washington or Seattle or somewhere around in that area. They killed Ed Cossey, the guy that rigged the parachute for the Dan Cooper jump. And Frank always thought that that guy tried to kill him, and he told me that if he ever went back to America, one thing he was going to do was make sure that that guy ended up dead. And he said that he would, if he couldn't do it himself, he would send someone to do it. And he talked around that, you know, to keep from saying the dead word and the and kill word. He, he'd work around that so that, because he told me that when I was 17, and that was one of the first things he told me when I first met him. So I just concluded that he was... Uh, unhappy with the way the guy packed the parachute for the Dan Cooper show. Back in 2013, somebody got into that guy's garage, Ed Cossey's garage, and beat him to death. And I think it was Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers. Because Frank told me that if he couldn't get up there to do it himself, he would send somebody to do it. Well, everybody that did it, the guys that did his dirty work for him or the Anglin brothers. On my next video, I'm gonna go through the FBI files for you and show you their rap sheet so you can see that they weren't just innocent little kids playing with pop guns. Well, they stole $18,000 from a bank back in the 50s. That was like a million bucks nowadays. They murdered some of my friends and I just don't think it's fair that America thinks that Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers were these wonderful little kids who got caught playing with a pop gun out in front of a bank. These guys robbed $18,000 from that bank back in the 50s when $18,000 was millions. It was probably, you know, a million dollars, I don't know. I know that in 1957 for 35 cents, you could get a hamburger, a big hamburger with meat in it, with french fries and a milkshake. Okay, 35 cents. So you tell me how much $18,000 was worth. You could have bought a half a dozen houses and lived on that for years and years and years. 
And these guys would rob banks in small towns, so they probably took everybody's savings out of the bank in that small town, and it was probably the town they lived in. So all of these uh, people in the town knew that these guys were more than just mischievous. And the jury and the judge decided to throw the book at them and gave them 35 years in Leavenworth. Now, you don't end up in Leavenworth for playing with a toy gun. That's a place where you spend your life 10, 12 hours a day breaking rocks. Or at least it was back then. I don't know how it is now. That's why they threw the book at them. Doesn't matter if you use a fake gun or not. The people in the bank thought the gun was real and they gave them all the money. But that's not the only thing they did. I'll, I'll show you a video on that. Meanwhile, isn't this a beautiful place? Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Give me some comments below and please give me a thumbs up on this video. It cost me a lot of money to go to Florida and make the video. I'm thinking about making another video up at Lake Tahoe. And I'm thinking about inviting my subscribers to come up and meet with me. And we can talk about all of the things that I know about these guys. So if any of you are interested, please leave me a comment. And I'm going to connect with you somehow. I'll give you my email or my phone number or whatever. And when I get ready to, to do that, maybe we can coordinate and, and get up there together. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up.